but I think the performance as well is probably what's got most people very upset uh, about in the performance of individual players, but also even team selection or even the performance of the entire team overall. There are so many issues that people have with the team's performance against Madagascar. Um, because right now we put ourselves in a position where on paper, if Ghana don't beat the Central African Republic, if they lose, let me put it that way, and Angola beat Madagascar as they're expected to do, the Black Star could miss out at an AFCON tournament for the first time since 1984. That is a... 2004. <laughs> that is 2004. Oh, it's 2004, oh, sorry. Yeah. For the first time since 2004. Um, but I don't know where you want to begin with as far as the game and all the talking points after the game are concerned? It's been more than 24 hours after the game. Yes. So now we are calm. We are calm. We are very calm. Yeah. Um, look, it was a very flat performance, we have to be honest. Um, I don't think a single player stood out. If anybody did his job, it was Atizigi, who dealt with whatever came his way. But apart from that, I don't think a, a single outfield player stood out too. Uh, have a, a half decent game it was it, it was very disturbing also because even the substitutions didn't make any impact at all yeah they came in and they basically did exactly what the, the guys on the pitch were already doing so it was quite disappointing you've mentioned it. it it would have been nice to have dealt with this game and then you can have i would be more relaxed in the final game at home against a central african republic which will a calm nerves in front of your home fans you can go out play your football enjoy yourself now it's a must win yeah. and it just changes the dynamics quite unnecessary also the mere fact that madagascar celebrated the the, the draw just shows you how disappointing ghana yeah. ghana were on the on the night so for me look not the best of performances but is the commentary around that's what i'm interested uh, around in. the, the, the well everybody says andrea you should not have started that game i don't agree I don't I necessarily have a problem, or I didn't have a problem with the starting 11. This starting 11, no. You're not facing Brazil. It's Madagascar you're facing. You can beat Madagascar without Kudus Mohamed. You can beat Madagascar even by bench, if you bench Pate and Co. You can beat Madagascar. You got no, a decent. You should beat. Yeah, you should. Should beat. is the word. Look, you can't, uh, we didn't play with Pate against Angola. Yeah. Andre yeah, didn't in play Angola, against, yeah. in Angola. Andre didn't play against Angola. In fact, we missed quite a number of first team no players. Salis, there was no Salis, there was no Jiku. No yeah. We still went and got a decent result and a much better performance than we saw. Isn't that what people are saying? Why didn't we build on that with the players that played that game? Because no. you see, against Angola, Ghana were not better until those substitutions in the second no. half. And people are saying that might be a template to take into the next games, but he no, you see, didn't do that. If, if you are saying that, then the, the, the argument should be the likes of Pate and Co did well, and then the player who played in, in place of Kudus didn't do well. Then you can say that this guy shouldn't have played ahead of Kudus. Okay. But if everybody didn't do well, it's not Kudus who will come and start the game that will change the performance for the right back. But or Ghana needed back. a win. For example, why did why did Kudus stay on the bench for as long as he did? Well, you see, I, I understand that argument, but it's, a, it's on it's on hindsight argument. It, when you look at the starting level, is it because Ghana oh, were not winning Madagascar. at all? And you it, it didn't look, look like Ghana were going no, to friend, score. You can't tell me that Black Stars in recent times can't win if Kudus doesn't start. No, that's not the point. Exactly. I'm saying so that if he Kudus benched him. Start, no, no, no. He benched him, right? Mm -hmm. But it was obvious, mm -hmm. and you did commentary, it was obvious very early on from that game that we needed a moment of magic. Mm -hmm. Because in terms of collective passing, we were never going to get past this Malagasy. Why did he keep him on the bench for as long as he did? That is Chris Hutton's question to answer. That's but, what I'm saying. So but again, mm. if Chris Hutton asks you that in the 10 minutes Kudus came on, what do he do differently? And how did the, ch the game change? Now, what had happened before he came? We didn't see anything. It is facts. But that's 10 minutes. It doesn't matter. When Karim, uh, Osman Bukhari came on against Angola, we saw the change like this. Yeah, but they played 30 minutes in that game. They came on very early. Look, we saw the change as soon as they came on. They didn't wait 20 minutes before making the, the, the change in the last 10 minutes. It is football. Again, look, when we talk about these things, eh, the 
this is international football. Yes. You play an average of like 10 matches a year. Yeah. Okay. In Africa, because we play the AFCON every two years, almost every year is a qualification period. True. So you have more competitive matches than friendly games. Yes. Head coaches don't have the luxury of going out and changing their teams for changing sick. Mm -hmm. You get me? So the chances of somebody who is young and impressing at club level to get his opportunity against us against somebody who is already experienced in his team is very slim. Okay. So the point is, when you get your chance, take it. Okay. It happens everywhere. Alvarez is how old? He's like 18. He's not playing for Argentina because he's 18 years old. Mm -hmm. He's playing for Argentina because when Scaloni gave him the chance, he took it. If he mm -hmm. didn't perform, they'll get him out and they'll get somebody who is doing well. When Osman Bukhari was brought on against Angola, did he not take his chance? Yes, he took his chance. Why didn't he start the next game? Are you going to start everybody who comes not on as a Not everybody, exactly. he but the better hand. players. Against um, Angola in the first game, Inyaki Williams didn't start. He started. Yeah, he he started. started. Semenyo came, came on, on and yeah. did well. In the following game, Semenyo started. He didn't do well. Against Inaki came, on and Inaki Inaki came well. well and Inaki did well. Against Angola, was, uh, this guy who gave the assist, Joseph Pinsel, yeah. came on, impacts up. Yeah. This game, Joseph Pinsel starts. There's no basics. There's no basics. If I want to do this person did well, so this person should have started. There are so many ex counter examples. My point is, the starting 11 on the team mm -hmm. should be able to beat Madagascar. Why didn't they do it then? Why didn't they do it? Be me, I put it down to two things. Okay. First of all, player attitude. The guys just look flat on the day. Why and was that? Because the game was important. So yes, it's went important. From that like a basical attitude. And I also, uh, secondly, too personally, I feel like the same way I'm sitting here saying they should have been able to beat Madagascar. That's probably the same thinking they were also thinking. That is Madagascar. So they are relaxed. So a I bit of complacency. Yes, compl I can bet you they will not play this way if it was Nigeria starting in front, uh, playing for, True. or if they that's went to Angola. Point. So that's how I see it. Secondly, also, look, I don't like this thing where, and on the lighter side, mind you, Ghana fans are like my United fans. Mm -hmm. They are a group of players who are the problems, and everything bad that happens is their fault. Okay. We sat here in this country. And we hounded Wakaso out of the national team because he was probably apparently the reason why party wasn't doing well. Wakaso goes, Baba Idrisu comes, Baba can pass, so party has to pass for him and pass for himself. <laughs> Baba is out. We didn't even take him to the World Cup. We didn't cup. even take him to the World Cup. Okay, he was injured. Salis he is now tweeted that he was going to be fit in one week. Uh, you forgot to say time no day. <laughs> <laughs> Salis is now playing with party. Yeah. Still, there are problems in the midfield. Who are you going to blame? We said Barbara Man was the problem. Barbara Man hasn't played in the last three internationals. We are sitting here, we are still not satisfied with the performances. Gideon we have tried has played two, two other left backs. Pozo has played one. All oh, beans. It's not working. We've seen two internationals, previous ones, without Andrea you starting. People complained about Angola. We complained about Angola for both games, Ababa Yara, and we should have dominated. You are playing at home. We didn't do this. We didn't do this. They, they didn't play. On that day, they said it was Jordan's fault because he was there. It's like, man, you. Every bad thing that happens, first Ronaldo, Maguire, Pogba. They've taken two. It's left with one. It is still Maguire's fault. Let's stop making players the scapegoat. Comparatively, there are the problems. two Angola games and Madagascar's game. Mm -hmm. Which of those did the Blasters play better? In the last six months, Comparatively. Ghana's best match has come against South Korea. Like? That was such a terrible game. But Ghana versus South Korea, where we won 3 2. Yeah, it was a terrible the, game. It would be terrible for you. It was a terrible game. In the World Cup, we didn't setting, manage the game. Ga oh. Ghana's best game in the, in the last six months right. has been against South Korea. No problem. So, you know, your there point has been so Andre, there has been Jordan. I'm saying, look, let's stop this. Is right. this one? So, so is this stop, one? Stop, is this stop one? Stop nitpicking and blaming. It doesn't blame. solve anything. All right, cool. We said,